Race number two is a class four over the 1200 meters. I said there was four debutants. There's not, in fact, there's only three. They're headed by Joyful Park, who drops back into class four for the first time. London Masters uh, on a hat trick. Royal Chocolate run up behind Sacred Ibis. That form looks good. Now the debutants, Glorious Legacy, Jumbo Bus, Supreme Witness, Happy Fiery Dragon was a winner a couple of starts back. Ever Strong's got some speed. He's got barrier eight and good choice ahead. He was also coming out of that Sacred Ibis race as well. He finished eighth. We've come to the touch screen, uh, Brett, for this one because with these debutantes, uh, there's a couple of unknown factors, uh, but it looks like Jumbo Bus, and what he did in a very recent trial at Happy Valley, he might try and jump and run. I would suggest so, Andrew. Yeah, he's um, got blinkers on too for that uh, first start, and I agree. I think as the speed map has got it, Jumbo Bus can eventually work his way over and find the front. He is a, a newcomer, so hopefully he steps out of the gates quite well from barrier number 10. Royal Chocolate's probably going to be the hardest horse to, uh, to hold out. From, uh, from this position. He jumped well last start, was right up on the speed. He's come up with barrier number one here for Brett Preble. So he might be the testing material for, for Jumbo Bus, but I think Callum will try and press on. They've got sparkling talent potentially moving uh, forward, going up to the longer trip, but generally he is a back marker. So this is another option for him. Of the other newcomers, um, I think both of them are most likely to sort of be back towards uh, the rear in Glorious Legacy and uh, Supreme Witness. Interested to see Jenny's report on all the newcomers. Um, numero uno, this horse looks like he's close to a win. I think he'll try and get right onto the back of Royal Chocolate. All right, so an interesting race uh, the second, Paul. What have they been showing you in the morning? Yeah, we'll have a couple of bits of uh, work here we can show you. The first one we're going to have a look at here is the first starter, Jumbo Bus. You can see he's really, really keen uh, with Neil Cullen aboard. Uh, pulling, he's got really good gate speed as you guys have highlighted and um, with blinkers on for the first time I can expect him to jump out nicely and put himself in the race. Here's the other first starter, Supreme Witness. I thought I'd concentrate on these first starters so you can look for yourself. He hasn't done too much in the morning but another big strong horse as you can see uh, with uh, this one as well so just a couple of pieces of uh, track work there for you. All right, well let's have a look at them in, uh, in action, some of them. Starting off with uh, London Master, won down the straight at a big price at Sha Tin um, and went off at um, $6 here as well and well, he blew them away. Yeah, he's in great form. The two Londons that uh, have gone to um, David Ferraris are both going well. Uh, Barrier 3, Karis Teton should get a nice run and uh, he's a horse in form. He won with plenty in hand, he's obviously gone up in the ratings. But I'll give him a good chance again. I see the public have. He's a $2.60 chance. I can understand why, Paul. Off the back of that performance mm. there, uh, that was quite an outstanding win. And, uh, well, maybe he's uh, really come back a, a much better horse this uh, preparation. We know David Ferrara's stable going well. The way he put them away there... Very hard to beat, I would have thought. Yep, still in class four as well. He's on a hat trick. Karis Teton in the saddle. Uh, wasn't a bad effort last time out from uh, Royal Chocolate. Good choice ahead further back. Makes up some good ground as well. But uh, Royal Chocolate, just his third start. Yeah, he's. Uh, there's not too many so you think progeny here in Hong Kong, but he is one that Jenny mentioned from the paddock would run well. Um, at his second start, and he got out of the gates well, as I showed you in that speed map before. From barrier one, you'd expect that he'll kick up, and he battled on quite strongly. Swamped in the end by Sacred Ibis, but that form reads well after he did the same to a big field on the weekend. Yeah, this is what I'm going to go with him to beat the favourite. I think we'll get a little bit of value around him. A barrier one, Brett Preble, we can just sit sit behind mm. the leaders and pounce when he wants to. All right. I thought he's dropped ten pounds too. So. Okay. Well, it was the shortest as far as the market's concerned at this stage of the first start is his Jumbo Bus. What of him with jockey Neil Callan? You've done quite a bit of track work and also ridden Jumbo Bus in both of his barrier trials. What can you tell us about him? Um, he's a nice big horse. Um, I didn't know what to expect when I, when I first sat on him and I was told he was called Jumbo Bus. <laughs> but he's a big horse. Um, still quite young, still quite green and uh, a little bit on the weak side. But um, I suppose when he puts it all together, he, he might show something in, in, in the future. But uh, what he's going to show first up, I don't know. He had a barrier trial last Friday at Happy Valley. We saw a bit of that greenness there. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's quite a one pace type of horse. So Ricky, you know, put the blinkers on him just to sharpen him up and, and just told me to let him roll. And uh, when he turned into the straight, I'm not sure whether he, he didn't know what to do or which side of the bollards to go, but uh, he took out one bollard. And, but um, to be fair to him though, once I straightened him up, he still galloped that well to the line. So that would suggest that he has something, uh, something in the locker and, uh, Hopefully that, that trial and, and, and that wake-up call with the blinkers on might, might just sharpen them up enough for, for a good run this time. And in that barrier trial you led, you've drawn wide here. Would the intention be to lead as well? Oh, look, he's first up. Um, it's difficult to say. You know, 
depending on how he jumps and all that. But um, I suppose if he jumped very clean and there was nothing going on, I suppose the 10 draw gives us a chance to let him roll and, and, and be up outside the lead or be handy as we can. And But then, you know, you never know. His first time out, he might fall out of the gates and, and just know nothing. So, look, he's, he's shown enough to suggest that he can run something. And, and, and in class four or 52, he'd show something. But look, we won't know until he runs. Looks like a nice horse to me. Mm. Me too, I've got him in the numbers. Same. <laughs> he, uh, it was interesting that the bus ran over the cone, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting, Neil's a touch conservative there, which is fair enough too. Yeah. He is a new horse and they can do a lot wrong. He's drawn 10, it's Happy Valley, we know it's a tricky race course. But should he step away well and, and find the rail to guide him, then I think he's going to run a pretty nice race. Yeah. He's actually, weight-wise, he's the smallest of the three first starters, which is quite interesting. He does look like a big horse. We can have a look at the other ones now. Starting off with Supreme Witness, actually tips the scales at 12.99. Yeah, he's a big, big boy, he's a Supreme Witness. It just took a little while to get going in this 1,000 metre trial. They are starting him up over 1200, uh, barrier 12 though with a tongue tie on. Uh, I've left him out, I thought he might get a bit yeah, lost. Yeah, I, I haven't been overly taken by his two trials, but when you look down and see those colours, they don't have too many bad ones. Mm. Um, so I would expect with time he'll get better. Um, Glorious legacy, 1200 pounds himself. Yeah, he's another big unit, and again, the colours have, uh, have had quality in the past, haven't they, with, uh, with glorious days. But another one I'm going to sit on the fence. I think the two we're highlighting now probably will end up being reasonable horses in time, but not quite ready first up. Yeah, by Master Craftsman, I thought, never been to Happy Valley. Uh, I, I think he'd be a nice horse in time, but we'll need further. Yeah. yeah, Supreme Witness is his first visit to Happy Valley yeah. as well, so a jumbo bus only with that. Very recent experience as well, it was a, a trial at the end of, of last week. So, uh, uh, interesting one here, Paul. Um, London Master for the hat-trick? No. I've got him in for second, but I think Royal Chocolate might just get the drop uh, on him and get first run on him. And uh, that form's really been uh, franked by, as we said, Sacred Ibis winning uh, impressively last time. So, Royal Chocolate, and he's dropped 10 pounds, he's, uh, so he'll be a little bit fitter going into this race. London Master, obviously the hardest to beat, and he'll be on the hat-trick. We'll start a short price favourite. Jumbo Bus will give him a chance uh, on debut. I think he can run nicely. And there's improvement from Ha Ha Ha. Uh, I see Joe Marrera's jumped aboard. Uh, barrier number five as well. Haven't minded his track work in the morning. So he went three, two, five, and nine, but we'll play sort it. So he is an improver in track yep. work? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I mm. thought saw Joe uh, jumping aboard there. Uh, look, there's some interesting runners in the race, but I think London Master, based on what he did last start, is very difficult to beat. Was it a fluke? Well, the time was pretty strong too, so I'm, I'm going to take it on face value and tip him to win again. Numero uno, I think, might be the danger uh, from barrier number two. Royal Chocolate and a Jumbo Bus, the two that will be striking the lead early. So two, seven, three and five. Yeah, it was well inside of standard. 109.61 when mm. standard is 110 and change. So, um, yeah, London Master for me too. That was uh, race number two.